Hey, Professor Dad. I'm about to arrive at the Foundation facility. Are you sure about this? Of course, Curly. Don't worry. I know you had unfortunate things occur in prior expectations, but we're working for the SCP Foundation now. They'll make sure you are safe so you can help retrieve all the entities that broke out of containment. Plus, they will pay us very well. Oh, hold on. General is calling. General Chase? Professor Trolley, my troops tell me you're through the force field, so welcome to hell. As you know, this location near Area 51 held many anomalies and dinos, but unfortunately, we had a security failure a year ago. So we will make a push together and fix this whole mess. Just keep our fingers crossed that he doesn't get out. General? General Chase, you're, you're breaking up. What in the world? Voice for impact! Beacon of Malice, by his command, be followed by decay and be bound to this land. Wait, who... who are... He... What a headache. Seems like I'm the only one who made it out alive. And all my things burnt to a crisp. But I can't stay here. So, let the show begin. And right off the bat, a burning undead humanoid was up in my face. And does not seem to be friendly. I wonder if it's the pilot. I got some basic resources gathered up and started prepping some tools. Even got some pearls. Crafted a spear to defend myself and some flimsy clothing. Hesitantly, I took out this ridden entity, as well as some civilian zombies that started appearing out of the sands. I can only assume these were the people that used to live in the area. And for some reason, I can take their severed limbs with me, along with flesh and plague samples. The flesh let me finish a cloth set, after which I got a drink at this oasis, but the longer I stay in these dunes, the less likely it is for me to survive. So I have no choice. I need to make a break for it, sprinting across the scorching sands, but I got thirsty real quick. And what struck fear into me is that the zombies became aggressive from a very far distance, and they came in all shapes and sizes, it seems. But that's when I could hear a motor approaching. Hey! Down here! Come save me! Please! Please! Is that a supply drop? Seems like General Chase is aware of my situation and is trying to send me some help. However, I don't have a keycard to open this box. Further, I ran under the blazing sun and only managed to stay hydrated thanks to these water jug bugs. Eventually, I managed to get to the what you could call mainland, exhausted and on the brink of passing out. But thanks to the cacti, I can get some water into my system. I rested for a bit, but things weren't looking good. And as I got some metal nearby, just in case, I spotted a Gallimimus run around frantically. Seems like not even the dinos are safe. In the shade of a large cactus, I placed a sleeping bag and whipped up a thatch hut, inside of which I could shake off the heat a little bit better. But I'm highly wounded, so I stayed in to heal up for a while. What in the blazes is that? It has to be an SCP. It seems friendly though, and seems like it has something important to say. It brings great news that Greece has been added to our sponsor, Rise of Kingdoms. That's right, the epic cross-platform strategy game with real-time battles and sweet customizable architecture has a ton of special events coming up. As you immerse yourself in the expansive open-world environments, conquering new lands through various historical eras, along with 60 million users and over 100 million downloads worldwide. With the ability to choose from 14 historical civilizations, you can command famous generals and military units as you build your legacy on the battlefield. You can even have team battles where you and your alliance members face an enemy together. All in-game actions take place on a single enormous map inhabited by players and NPCs featuring natural obstructions such as rivers and mountain ranges and strategic passes that must be captured to gain entrance to neighboring regions. And here's the kicker, the Civilization Clash event, where players fight for their own civilization that you can join right now by clicking the second link in the pinned comments or enter rok.games to win special prizes including an Apple Vision Pro. And you heard me right, my lovelies, the newest arrival into ROK is Greece with its exclusive commanders and special units which add a special flair to your gameplay. Wow, you do really bring good news. 
So join me by downloading Rise of Kingdoms through the first link down below or by scanning the QR code. And don't forget, my lovelies, to use the promo code on screen for 20 silver keys just for new players. With these special events happening at ROK Games right now, it is the perfect time to participate through this link for those special prizes like the Apple Vision Pro. And a big thank you to Rise of Kingdoms for supporting me and my team with this sponsor. No, no, wait, come back. I was about to win. What a dream. But back to my survival. I whipped up some bolas when I heard some zombies getting close to the hut, so I wanted to get a head start and get running when I noticed it started to rain. What a relief. This will let me travel farther to find a safer location to camp out till help comes. And I'm sure heading towards the river that runs north to south is a good call. Where I spotted some wild morella tops, I harvested some bushes, but shortly after, I heard them fighting, so in the confusion, I sprinted on past them to avoid any conflict. Finally, I got to the river, but had a tragic fall, which almost got me killed. Some jerboas served to get me some meat and hide, and with some wood harvested, I decided to set up at this flat end that's floating over the almost dried up river. So, some basic base setup began, but as night was in full swing, I could see red eyes glowing in the night coming for me. So I quickly placed two spike walls, limiting my space to this ledge here, but hey, I'd rather almost fall to my death than be eaten alive. Once the sun finally came out on day two, I cleaned up the zombies at my spikes, and seems like these civilian ones are not very intelligent. Some stone was collected to make a pestle and mortar, but then I crafted some clay to hopefully quickly make an adobe hut to shield me from the heat. More spike walls would surely help, is what I thought as I made my way down for a drink with a water skin, but a new terrifying being came into view. An imp. Hey, yo, no. I leaped onto a ledge and hid the best I could after suffering a painful gas ball hit. My bones are broken, so my only option was to place the two spiked walls that I had to cage in some new zombies that appeared, and just keep on going for the water since at this rate I'll die any second. So with a good refill, it was time to head up again, but my showdown wasn't over just yet. <gasps> it can't be bullet. Thanks to my speed, I got home in one piece and left the imp in the dust. So I came up with the idea to expand my space by moving the spikes outward and even managed to place down a decent bed and standing torches, which allowed me to spot a very creepy new kind of zombie staring at me ominously. So I put together a new thatch hut to protect myself from prying eyes of the no longer living. Day three had me starting off with fixing my clothes, and set out to look for Crystal on a nearby hill. But here is where a new threat showed itself that I dubbed the Slasher, and it is coming for me. Oh boy. And the other way up is filled with even more dangers, so I did my best to sneak past them all, got up to the tippy top, and got my Crystal, which was used to make the awesome spyglass, so now I know what I will be up against with better information at the ready. But I need more water for crying out loud. Some large ants got me some chitin for later, but I spotted this parasite nearby that, thankfully, I managed to slay just as a sandstorm hit, reducing my visibility and stamina. And it gave me rotten hide, but my brain power had an idea. Make a parachute and glide on home with the winds of the storm on my back. More zombies were needed to be removed, but what surprised me is one dropped a filled water bottle, which is just what I needed. Zombie water. Refreshing. As for the scientist, it dropped a syringe, so maybe I can make some type of medication. As you can see, my viral zombie infection down here from all the bites is stacking up quite quickly, and I don't want to know what happens when it goes all the way up. Inside I was safe, so to wait out the storm I began making adobe pieces, but not quite enough for a full hut. I would need more cactus for that. I resorted to ending more zombies in hopes for more water bottles, when a bloater was coming closer whom I ended and he had canned foods on him, which is such a relief, so I would prioritize ending them as well. But a odd scenario happened where a horde of cop zombies appeared together with a armored SWAT boy. Must have met their end working here, but man, this one is tanky, I can't deal with him. A water break was needed, so I parachuted down successfully, and right after I just searched for more cactuses for my hut, and on this journey, an Eldritch Overridden wanted to fight. Seems like Eldritch versions are more powerful variants, but this one was an easy to deal with case, and it even gave me some ammo, some tools. 
but the fauna here was a nightmare to deal with too. Thankfully, I could save myself from these birds with my last bola. Sadly though, that does leave me more defenseless. Yo, what the? No, 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 no. Oh, oh, oh crap. That was a close call. And hey, I can see my camp from up here. And since no cacti were around, I grabbed a note to feel inspired and parachuted back to my camp safely to craft spike walls all night. But the blood curdling screams of zombies had me on alert as a horde came in as to seemingly hunt me down. Uh oh, this is bad. They don't stop coming. Okay, oh, evasive maneuvers. Within the frail safety of my walls, I at least got to placing a forge to smelt the bit of metal that I had gotten earlier. Day 4 started with a smithy, hide gathering, and I have a ton of water bottles by now. But I do sure hope the foundation comes looking for me soon. I don't know how long I'll last. But I can't expect them to come anytime soon, so I whipped up a full desert cloth set to shield myself from the blazing heat. With a metal pick crafted, I was about to go to get some more metal, but a bloater exploded. Talk about a bumpy start. Even had to face this weird looking mutation Z abomination. Never want to see that thing again, it still haunts me. But here is where I would have a fateful encounter with a SCP, number 1013 to be exact. And I can see that to tame it, I would need calcified meat. But the elements were not quite done with me just yet. Uh oh. That's not good. Up this new mountain, I picked up some sulfur and chow down on canned olives since my life quite literally depended on them. Some hide got looted, but no metal seems to be here, so I just parachuted down to camp where I made this workbench with a head on it, because that's important to craft things. Either way, here I can make medicines like the zombie cure with a ton of stuff. So to start, I made some bandages from the rags we had gotten from zombie clothes and read up that firecrackers can work as distractions, so that might be handy later on. Also, later in the day, I finally got some metal gathered, but this eldritch imp absolutely bombed me into the afterlife is what I thought since I respawned in my underwear, still stuck in this hellhole of a desert. Not even death can free me of my suffering. That hooded figure did say something about being bound to this land. Once back where I died, I forgot that I still needed to deal with this thing. Oh boy. Hey big boy, how you doing? Uh, I'm just gonna dodge and weave. Woo! That did uh, quite a lot of damage. All right, and I think I should be safe. I should be safe. Okay, cool. There we go. Got my stuff back and got back to smelting the ore at sunset. And that roar right there is my cue to stay inside till sunrise. Day five and hatchets, bow and arrows were made. And during some thatch gathering, this oversized kitty cat wanted me as a snack. So I hopped on a rock and shoot it away with some arrows. Now I could make my tent in peace grab a note for faster learning, as well as got my spikes back that I used a few days back. Fill up my water bottles and off I go again to look for cacti, ending up at the first place that I arrived at when I got out of the dunes. But seems like some strong entities were tracking me. Uh oh, that's a literal big boy. And an imp. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Oh. Ah, I'm on fire. Okay, that's bad. I have my bandages. I live. That fire is nasty. I do not want to deal with that, nor either of those two. So, uh, I'm gonna go around. So, circling around whatever that was, I got the sap, but the sun was setting rapidly, so I skedaddled on back to camp through a whole zombie horde, arriving home terrified, but alive. The sixth day had me making more adobe pieces, arrows, and embark on another cactus trip since now I know where to go. However, I got distracted and began to feed this vulture since I am lonely and need a friend. As it flew down from the cliffside, I got punched and thrown off by a zombie, which also infected me. Thankfully, I had this extra parachute to break my fall. Swiftly, I finished the tame of the vulture, snatched it up, and in my diseased state, I didn't react in time to save myself from a saber tooth. Respawning had me figuring out that death cures diseases, and as soon as I could move, I got to our bird and whistled it to safety and followed it up with getting my loot bag. With some extra silk, I repaired my desert cloth armor, but needed some crystal to repair the headpiece. Whoever, Slasher, appeared. Uh-oh. Oh boy, this is not good. This is very not good. Oh crap, he made it. 
Ah! Okay. Day 7, stuff got claimed back, same goes for the vulture, and once home I repaired the headpiece like I wanted, and went for a water refill but stopped midway to name the vulture Sentinel. On the way I learned that these kinds of zombies here can drop Z blood bags. Not sure if I want to heal with that though. Sentinel and I actually make a pretty good team, learning to mutually defend each other which was the highlight of the day. Plus, got a ton of cactus to go, but this diseased looking eldritch stego was too close and I don't need to figure out what that'll do to me so I went back to camp, got food cooking, and finally finished enough adobe pieces to begin to make a hut, and in anticipation of that I took the time to move the spikes outwards even more to claim more ground. So at the crack of dawn I was in full swing setting up a home, and yes my fear of falling off the ledge came true which is why I always carry a spare parachute. So might as well fill up on water since I'm down here already. Wood got chopped, and once the shack had a rectangular shape, I added a lookout on the roof. I would need a little bit more thatch for that, so let's just go get- No 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 Now he's just standing there, very menacingly. So I did the logical thing, which was to lure him off the ledge to hopefully never see him again. With the base expanded by night, I started to move my belongings in when I heard yet another sandstorm muffled through my walls. Uh, yeah, I'm not going out in all that mess. Yet zombies somehow got into the camp in the early hours of day 9. Once dealt with and the place lit up better, I continued to move in, and out of the Trank++ plus plus mortar and some basic narcotics were made to start. This rad tooled smithy was placed along with a preserving bin, destroyed the old thatch hut, and made this here tower to be able to get a good view of the area. With spark powder and narcotics underway, I wanted to cure my disease, so I turned an empty bottle into plastic, an ingredient to make painkillers. Then, I made a stim pack, more bandages, antibiotics, combine all of those items into a med kit, and then mix that with the plague samples to end up with the plague cure, which gets rid of my ailments completely. Tense day, and I feel like no one is coming to get me out of here. I built a crossbow to go on the offense as of now. As for defense, I got a gate set up, but it seems like the zombies can damage it a little bit. So they got cleaned up, after which I began to make a fence on the back ledge to prevent any more dreadful falls. First by nightfall, it was almost done, but I came up with an idea to make stairs downwards to make a ladder eventually, all the way to where the water is to hopefully make an intake that goes all the way up to the camp. Eleven came around and I came to the realization that the tower ain't that good to shoot from to get the zombies off my door, so I did some wiggle work to get it placed a bit better, but during my labor, another plane flew overhead. I could see it dropping packages, but it seemed to have missed my camp by a small margin. With the tower finally positioned better, I built downwards, making trips to get resources to keep at it, but this juggernaut was at my front door! So I had to sneak past under my spike wall to continue working on my ladder for that sweet sweet H2O down there. As for the juggy, he started attacking my spikes in an attempt to get in, so I did end him while his brain seemed to be out of town, occupied with my walls seemingly trying to comprehend my architectural prowess, and once slain, let me loot a whole tire for some reason. 12 and I was still on that ladder grind, had a little water break in between, and got chased by yet another saber and just went to hide in my camp once more since I'm a little scaredy cat. But I noticed the crate that we saw coming down from the skies actually landed in my backyard. I still have no key card, but I can see that I can break the padlock. So that's what I did. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no, okay. I did it bad. I did it very bad. Seven zombies left. Oh, I actually have to kill the ones that spawned. Oh, next wave starting in... Uh-oh. Who was attacking my house? How are you in my house? Get out of there. Four zombies left. How do you guys get in my house? Shoo! What happened to my airdrop? Don't tell me that a zombie broke my airdrop. Okay. Seemed like I had to protect it. Well, I learned a valuable lesson today. After all that commotion was over, I tried to kill this SWAT zombie since he's stuck in the wall and that took me all night. However, that did land me a rocket launcher. 
I'm just glad that he wasn't smart enough to use it. Let's just not think about that. Finally, on day 13, the ladder was done, but I do need to set up some security down here for some will want to nibble on me toes. So I was gathering wood for spikes when a mutant bit me, which immediately kicked the Z-Virus into overdrive, and my health was dropping fast. As quickly as I could, I moved my sickly body over to the medicine table, where I made some painkillers since that is all that I could afford at this point in time. It does restore 50% of my health, but that does not get rid of the disease, and bandages were just barely cutting it, but we will live. During this time, I made some blue narcotics, which are very potent, but this is when dehydration kicked in. Thankfully, the canned foods filled some thirst, but the sandstorm was making things much worse than they need to be. I had no choice but to stay put for the night. Once the storm passed the next day, I took a look around and a massive beetle was nearby. A carrier hive. You don't want to mess with that. It was time though to make the water spot safe, but every zombie in the area was attracted to me, so mid-jump, I latched onto the ladder to save myself. I took another shot at a nearby rock formation from where I began to fling arrows at the lumps of walking flesh, but some poor foot placements later had me finding myself down there and running away from a terror bird, just reaching the ladder in time to save my booty cheeks. Once it wandered off, I got rid of these walkers, but it came back to eat the corpses and me. And this is, this is tough. I gave it another shot and it seems to be working now. I can drink here and the spike walls will keep unwanted predators out. All done, water sorted for easy access. So the next thing on the to-do list is to get some tames. So with some good and normal trank darts at the ready, I wanted to tame a high level Lymantria right outside of the camp. But little did I know that I was being watched. His struggles amuse me, but I need him to lead the undead to the foundation. This time, break down his gate. That should force him in the right direction. Uh oh. No. No. Ooh. This is bad. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, he's trying to break in. It's 43k health? What? Oh, he's gonna break through my door. That was way too close for comfort. I'm so glad that I could take him out by sunrise since that's half of the gate broken. Who knows if even more horrifying things will come for me. To my frustration, the high level Lamantria was nowhere to be seen. So I got two crossbows ready, one for drinking and one for killing, and went on a hunt, spotting only weak moths. And going further down right now is, uh, as you can see, a no-go. So I did the opposite and climbed up to have the high ground from where I managed to spot the high level moth far, far away. Without really thinking about it, I parachuted for it. Mid descent is when I realized this is kind of dumb since I don't have a saddle for it just yet. Once on the ground, I began to shoot down the scorpion for its chitin to make the saddle that I mentioned, but the commotion attracted all sorts of undead beings, like this fire zombie who packs a punch. Ow. Thanks to Ebola, I could hold it in place while I made a dash for the scorpion, got its chitin, and made my grand escape. But the high-level moth was gone again, and to make matters worse, the sun is about to set. My only possible way out of this is to tame a low-level direwolf right here, which I landed the KO on and began to feed it some meat. But now this meant that I would need to protect us from zombies all night. The SWAT zombie landed me some ammunition on the next day, and shortly after, the tame was done mid-zombie fights, might I say, and the wolf was named Shikigami. Together we sprinted home, past the zombie hordes, and confidently even won some battles on the way. Yet due to the main path up being an enemy hotspot at the moment, we would need to find a new path home. Exploring the neighboring areas, when another plane was flying over the canyon, sending me a package right on this stone spike. This time with our new wolf, I am sure that we can fend off the zombie hordes. Second wave. Keep defending the airdrop. Okay. No, 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 no. Don't break it. Don't you do it. Next wave. This should be the last wave. I'm out of stam. Get, get away, get away, get away. Get off of it. This is mine. 
is my drop. Three zombies left. Encounter complete. Crate is now unlocked. Ooh, let's see what's inside. Give me my goodies. Ooh, that's some good crossbows right there. That is a massive upgrade. That was well worth it, so we'll keep an eye out for more of those crates. At sunset, we got back to camp. Happy that we made it back alive. Before anything else, I crafted some soul traps to pot up Shikigami to make sure that it would not perish in my sleep. Sentinel and I were getting hungry. So we had a cookout together, but in that exact same moment, super heat ravaged the desert. And you already know that I'm not heading out in these conditions to figure out what it feels like to be in an air fryer. Remember that SCP that we saw that needed calcified meat? Well, I didn't forget that, and to make that, we would need some prime meat first, which I attempted to get by air striking the Sartanobo as quite effectively, I might say, gaining me a few chunks. And with some rocks together, we could make the calcified meat. But to tame anything, I would first need some narco berries. That's not good. Okay, time to go. Cheeky Gabby, you're up. Let's get out of here. Well then, time to look for a herbivore to tame. We prowled the desert, but made a grave mistake by not pacing ourselves, leading Shikigami to run out of stamina in the worst possible time, resulting in it getting eaten. And I was quick to share the exact same fate. So you get the drill. Wake up, run through the desert in my underwear with complete disregard of if anyone can see me, get my stuff, save Sentinel, only to become bird food in a desperate attempt to fight back. This death had me appearing in the middle of the desert this time, but thanks to my map, I knew where to go. But the heat was cooking your boy alive. Zombie hordes started appearing, and I could hear a large monster nearby, which has to be an SCP, so I'll have to come back here later. First, though, I would need a circle around this invisible rock drake who thinks he's sneaky. After a very long sprint through the night, I claimed my items back and saved Sentinel, who thankfully was still alive. Trekking through the mountains and past some nasty creatures, seeing the camp was a sight to behold. That was a rough night, I could not be happier to walk through this gate. Narcotics were still a daily chore to make since I want to tame that SCP so badly, to prove that not only I can survive here, but that I can thrive and continue my research. But no matter where I go, death followed, as if it was glued to me. Uh oh, that's Shredder. Whoa! Ow! What was that? Oh my gosh, that hurt. Well, getting my stuff back was starting to feel a little bit more normal, although knowing Sentinel passed away and that attack had me feeling down in the dumps. Plus, night was setting in and a zombie horde was something that I really did not want to deal with right now, so might as well just fill up a water bottle and hit the hay for the night, is what I thought. <gasps> Oh my gosh! Oh! Oh! That was so close! During my routine zombie cleanup in the morning of day 19, it became clear as... Well, day, that I need a flying tame. Staying on the ground is a death sentence, and I need to start thinking about finding the foundation, since it's been almost three weeks and no one has showed up. So I made the Lymantria saddle that we wanted, and quickly spotted a good target. A bulla held it in place, and the potent trank arrows made short work of it, sending it to Sleepy Town. But this place was not safe at all, and what really grinded my gears was that a different Lymantria came zooming towards us and led a direwolf and Sabertooth to my 2B best friend, who was then right after eaten alive. Just my luck. I feel hopeless. Honestly, I take one step forward and two steps back. At every turn, my mind was drawing a blank as on what to do. I ended up roaming the desert aimlessly, alone and destined to die. The night set in with a fearsome drop in temperature and all I did was huddled up on this rock by myself, thinking, pondering what to do. A fraction of what you can call hope hit me when I saw a max level kangaroo next to me. But I would need rare mushrooms to tame it, but it would be the perfect tame to get me back on track but the nearest place to get those would be from the crystals at the top of this mountain. It was a painstaking process to sneak up undetected and avoiding wild pickies, but as I got up, pretty much all of the crystal that I wanted was gone from which I was going to get the rare mushrooms. 
that bit of hope was fading very quickly, ain't gonna lie to you. Looking over the desert landscape, all I could think of was getting a flyer and finding the dang foundation. The SWAT zombie, however, was in fact the key to my progress, as it dropped a flippin' keycard for the boxes and a good assault rifle. That's a good sign. Things might be looking up. Far down, a moth was spotted, and I wasted no time tumbling and fumbling down the mountainside, and I landed that KO ASAP, along with this level 150 Parasaur that was just stuck. Hey, I might get a flyer and a herbivore for narcoberry gathering in one sitting, but standing still is never a good idea here, since zombies just keep coming, and they can easily overwhelm me if I don't keep their numbers low. Thankfully, more guns were looted from the corpses, so that is motivational. The Parasaur was ready this day and dubbed Pringles, whom I quickly potted up for safety. The moth, on the other hand, would take quite some time, so I got to slaying walkers left and right through the night. Prioritizing the cop-looking walkers along with SWAT gained me small batches of ammo, but here we go, the moth is done. I made a break for it, mounted it, and took to the skies to safety for the first time. Looking for my base, I stumbled upon a village that has definitely seen better days. Seems like the former residents are no longer here, as everything is destroyed and on fire. And as things go, it seems like always around me, zombies rise from their graves. At this point, I am certain that that hooded figure put more than just one curse on me. I could just never escape the hordes, so I flew on off through the canyon and back to my camp, where I named my moth Dorado due to its golden wings. Pringles was saddled and got straight to work getting narco berries, and for once, I was feeling unstoppable. Things were going smoothly for once. Scouting in the evening, I saw SCP-1013 again, but it died. Thankfully, I spotted another in the area for a future tame attempt. But I noticed that a blue moon was out, which improved supply drop loot quality, so I seized the opportunity and managed to get one drop with a blueprint to make ascended chitin leggings at sunrise. A thunderstorm was pulling up on the horizon, but I pressed on since some drops still might have good loot inside them, even though the night had already passed. And this led me to find more types of entities like SCP-323, looking absolutely terrifying, plus it needs human flesh to tame, not sure if I want to toss up an arm to make that new friend just yet. A bit of metal was collected in the mountains here, and after that I returned to the spot where I heard those horrifying roars that one night, and seems like the culprit is SCP-1471-A. Definitely need to contain that one, since I have some good quality meat that I could use for this. Even a wyvern was close by, you would think that would be an SCP, I guess it isn't. Circling back to the burning village, a massive blue crab was spotted labeled SCP-3700, looking very out of place, but Hey, it seems pretty chill. Man, I need to get into contact with Professor Nat so he can brief me on these things before I get too reckless, but I did have a burning desire to show up to the Foundation alive and with SCPs contained, so I got to prepping for taming, like getting some prime meat, craft trank arrows, as well as more calcified meat, and came up with how to make human flesh, an alternative one might say, by mixing raw meat with human blood. And then I did find this syringe on a zombie, so I pumped out some of my own blood and made some. And I hope no one finds me with this since uh, this will be hard to explain. A sigh of relief on day 23 was spotting another plane, and seeing its crates falling down, I rushed to him and used the key card that we got, granting us tons of meds without having to fight any waves. Talk about just what the doctor ordered. However, time to tame some nasties, and SCP-1013 has Keter in its description. I'm going to need General Chase to clear that up for me, but let's not waste any time. It's an SCP. I've done dinos before. This can't be too hard. Hold still, please. Hey, where are you going? Hey, come back! Oh, it's not even aggressive. It's running from me. There you go. Night, night, sweet prince. There we go. Simple enough. And with calcified meat in its belly, it will be tamed soon. So I went on to scout around and encountered SCP-3456, an undead horseman-looking thing. Sadly, when I returned to our team, some hyenodons took it upon themselves to eat our first shot at a successful mission. So I got to getting more prime meat, calcified it, made some spike walls, and tried another. But a big boy took it upon himself to ruin my attempt. Please, 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 please. Fly! Fly! Oh. Ooh. 
A harvest moon rose this night for better gathering opportunities, but I was dead set on succeeding at this time, so I spent all night fighting this massive man, landing the kill the next day. And as my luck would have it, super heat kicked in, but at least I'm wearing desert cloth. SCP-1013 was tranquilized successfully, and once fed and protected with spikes, I waited until I got distracted by this loot drop with free adobe pieces and a whole spare desert set. After a long time of keeping myself occupied, it was tamed and apparently I could pick it up. Kind of odd, but hey, at least it's friendly and doesn't want to eat my face. We returned at nightfall to HQ and seems like I can ride it too, so that's pretty neat. Having spent a quarter of a hundred days in this godforsaken desert, I made up my mind to find the foundation myself. I have had it. No idea where to look for it, but I just kept flying since that way I'll run into it eventually. But hey, at least like this I can see more SCPs to tame later, like whatever this undead thing is. Ruins were spotted in the dunes, but that's also the prime place for the Scorched Undead Legion to roam around, seemingly to prevent anyone to get in or out of this land. After more scouting, a dreadful sight is what I witnessed, a seemingly zombified crocodile shredding everything around. Please don't make me tame that general chase. The sunlight was fleeting, but over the hillside I finally reached my destination, but things were not how I thought they'd be. Don't shoot! I'm with the Foundation! Professor Crowley! Down here! Alright, I'm coming down! I'm Private Flanders. Glad to see you're alive, Professor. We all assumed the worst. Well, it really is nothing short of a miracle that I'm still amongst the living. Come, I'll escort you to General Chase. I'm sure he's eager to brief you on the situation. I need those turrets restocked on the double. Prep the heli for another expedition to retrieve the wild dinos! Private Flanders, where is my 8.30 p.m. scotch? Well, I'll be. Professor, glad to see you amongst the living. Thought I'd have a nightmare explaining your death to the higher-ups. Considering that you're here under my supervision. Finders, get me the radio. I'm sure Professor Nat is eager to hear his colleague is still alive. General, pleasure to meet you. By the look of things, y'all have your hands full. You can say that again. Either way, welcome to our improvised headquarters. As you know, the plan was for us to begin containing the wild dinos, and your job was to contain the SCPs and bring them here for temporary containment. However, a new threat has appeared. As of a few days ago, we've noticed a change in some of the SCPs' behavior, seemingly attempting coordinated attacks on this base, resulting in some casualties. This coincides with the appearance of a hooded figure who seems to have the ability to raise the dead. Due to his power and red clothing, Flanders has named the figure the Scarlet Acolyte. Such a stupid name. But my gut feeling is that he wants to free the Scarlet King. I'm not that certain. But if that is the case, it could mean apocalyptic consequences for the entire world. That has to be the same person that appeared before me as my helicopter crashed and seemingly put a curse. Sir, the walkers! They're coming! But there are way more this time! They are about to get in! What? Everybody, looks like break time is over! Grab your weapons, get to the perimeter on the double! And fighters, get me that damn scotch! General, I think this has something to do with me. No matter where I go, the undead never stop coming. I hypothesize that the longer I stay, the worse it'll get for everyone here. Not a chance! One of my top priorities is to keep you alive! I'll be alright. I'll be taking the radio to stay in touch, and I'll uphold my duties and contain as many entities for my time here, and bring them to you once these threats die down. Fine! But my obligations to your safety are over once you leave. Hey, it's me. What the... Hey, Curly! I wasn't worried for a second. I knew you were safe. That could not be further from the truth. Either way, how's the SCP hunting going? Well, I got one, so that's a start. Uh, what? You you actually got one? That's amazing! Great job! Well, now you know the drill. I have partial access to the Foundation's database, even though a lot of the documents are corrupted, but we'll do it like the good old days. You find the targets, and I'll give you some info when needed, alright? I'm taking part of your paycheck, by the way. Crowley out. No, 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 wait, wait, wait! Well then, everybody, time to get to work, and I am feeling motivated. 
And what better way to get the ball rolling than to tame a high-level kangaroo, which I caged in some wooden billboards, rather unnecessarily since the potent arrows were a one-tap, but yeah, fed it some shrooms and defended this new homie for the remaining hours of the day, succeeding in gaining its trust at night. In the morning of day 27 is when I dubbed it Private Hopkins, but to saddle it I would need some more pelt, so off we go. An eldritch moth chased us around for a bit, leading me to eventually come across an Ovis, or at least that's what it appeared to be. I got 594 in my sight. What's the procedure? Interesting. Looking into the database, I can read that this electric sheep can, you guessed it, shock you. So be careful approaching it with metal objects. But you should have no problem containing it just with a mix of vegetables. Wolves were my go-to kill for pelt, but once I got to Green Obelisk, I saw some real Ovis chilling near the pond, which were the perfect critters to get not only pelt, but also mutton to speed up the taming process on some strong creatures. Just in the nick of time, I spotted a sneaky slasher who was coming from behind me, but that should do, and home we go. However, a blood moon was out, which means more alpha variant dinos are around, and all enemies deal double damage to me and my tame, so I'm just gonna chill in the sky till it passes. Once daylight graced us, I flew on over to the big old blue crab to get some info. Yo, what do you expect me to do with a giant blue lobster? Ah, yes, that must be 3700-1 you must be referring to. And be happy its counterpart isn't here having an all-out war. This one should be relatively easy to contain, as it has been registered as generally non-hostile. That's about all the information I've access to. Alright. Oh, must be at least level 90 to feed SCP, okay. Back to basics though, Hopkins was settled and taken out on a resource run thanks to its amazing carry weight and mobility, and also performs well for berry gathering, which all came together in the night to smelt ore, make clay, and mix up narcotics. Day 29 and I was back at the horseman beings and trying to fend off tons of zombies, and I couldn't get a hold of the professor on more intel, plus its intimidate roar, well, intimidated me. Maybe that's what's blocking my signal. I tried to knock one out, but it vanished before my eyes, so I flew on over to the SCP that I personally have dubbed Fluffy. And it sits. Okay, oh, I think he's bad. Oh, I managed to feed him once. Hey, that worked! There you go, eat that. Oh, he likes it! Oh, he likes it very much, he's a good boy! Hey, I got him! What a success! But fear is always around the corner here as another Blood Moon rose, so I hunkered down and expanded the base some more since it's been getting way too cramped in here. 30? Well, I was building and defending, doing my best to make the house not a cube. Even kept building through a storm, but it was pretty straightforward of a day. Most likely the most chill one thus far. 31 had me leveling Fluffball here who laughs in a way that Makes me very confused and uncomfortable, but okay. Hey, Crawley, did um, did you send me some pics of a new SCP, a fluffy one? Um, no. Huh. Weird. Phone must be bugging out. Anyway, I need some polymers, so off we hop towards the dunes. But this giant Bronto-looking being was blocking my path and making me all trippy. And things got worse when this meat dog-looking thing chased me non-stop, leading me to a pack of micro-raptors that stunned me off of Hopkins and nibbled my ankles till I passed away. So, multiple parachutes later, I got back to him and thankfully Private was still alive, and I got my stuff back. But to continue to look for Polly, I would need more water and a new set of clothes, so a trip home sorted that problem, and time to circle back to the dunes thinking I was home free. <gasps> whoa, whoa. Holy sh! Holy sh! Holy sh! How is it so fast? Holy! I can't see anything! I can't see anything! Oh! That right there is the prime definition of a nope rope, and seems like my screams of terror attracted this giant called Breaker. It seems like he hasn't noticed me just yet. Time to get out of here, but as I look back, I saw Cthulhu? Alright, I'm calling him. I need a raise. I did not sign up to catch Cthulhu. Okay, okay, calm down. I know this looks bad, but hear me out. He's generally a cool guy. Just don't hang out around him too long since, you know, you might end up worshipping him as a deity. Wait, what? 
Uh, sorry, just my pizza just got shipped. Bye. I was still on the prowl to get some polymer on day 32 from mantis bodies, but my gosh, there are just so many zombies. And in the commotion, I had lost focus of Hopkins' health. Yeah. No, 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 jump. Oh, you have to be kidding me. All right, zombies, you want to go? I got painkillers for days, motherfucker. Well, that's an ugly boy. Woo. Almost got you. Come here. Fight me. I'm all in, baby. There you go, stupid. They're gonna just give me my flippin' polymer, man. Hopkins had a bright future ahead. Now I need to get home without my wheels. The new vulture could come in handy out here, so I tamed Dust. Yet it was a far cry from Sentinel. It's your time to shine, Dust! Oh! Fight him! Stinking bird! Now then you do something. Oh, painkillers! Woo! That was close. Sandstorm! Perfect, yeah. Things were rough. And then got good, and now things are turning south again. The walk home felt like an eternity, but finally I got through my pearly gates and made what the poly was intended for. A soul gun, plus a soul terminal. Your death will not be in vain, Private Hopkins, and I will have vengeance. I got gasoline going on day 33, put together a fabricator, repaired my best rifle, mixed up some boom boom powder, and got ammunition rolling. Come at me, his Crowley's lost a screw or two by now. And guess what? It's meat puppy time! 2256 was in the area, so that is a bit of a problem. But once it was out of view, I noticed there were two adult 939s, as well as a baby. So this whole family is getting adopted, knocking out all three of the rascals. But the greatest threat of all was still micro raptors. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Oh boy. Oh, oh, oh. Woo. Just that already. Oh. Thanks to the mutton, they took almost no time at all to trust me as my new companions. And this SWAT dropped a good compound bow. Very nice. However, we must stay on the move. There's still much left to do. 34, and I got straight to testing 939 and could see it has a nocturnal mode, which gains it the nightmare buff. What's the deal with this abomination? Well, this one seems to be a trickster, being able to copy any voice. Some of the data here suggests that it is useful to contain SCP-323, though that one resembling a Wendigo. My best guess is you make them fight and, you know, see what happens. Superheat was on the menu today, but I cared not. Far we traveled to find this wicked beast, and upon my arrival, I could read the containment procedures, which is to send a tamed 939 after it, let it die, which will trigger 323 to feast on its fleshy corpse, allowing me to tame it with human flesh. A level 130 was the top dog around here, so I gave a crack at it. My puppies threw themselves at it, and slowly I was gaining its trust as it plopped down to indulge itself. Dust did meet its end when it turned on us, rest in peace, but I ran out of SCPs to sacrifice, and I'm just one feed shy of containing this one, so I went back to the 939 breeding grounds and KO'd a juvenile in the night. But I just could not tame it at dawn of day 35 since there is so many hostile entities around. A extra nuisance was a new type of strong undead called Sycamore, who was harassing me non-stop but I managed to slay it and put it back six feet under where it belongs. Finally the juvie was tamed and up next was this skittish adult that for the life of me I just could not get a hold of. It's a slippery booger. It took me way too long to catch it but finally it went night night and became part of our party. I did test out some flame arrows that I got and man, these things are pretty amazing. Even got to loot this empty control collar. I think we can restrain a zombie with this. But back to the task at hand, I zipped on over to 939 and to my surprise, its food was super low. So only one more sacrifice and it should be ours. However, I forgot an important part to this plan success. See, 939's gained the nocturnal buff as mentioned and even as it is an extremely low level, it just shredded the poor tame into pieces. Well, 
that is a whole lot of work down the drain. Better not let Chase know about this one. But would you look at that? A new plane dropping boxes. Opening this one in the dunes was a nightmare since the Scorched Legion was defending it, but I just barely managed to snatch up its contents and escape with my head on my shoulders, granting me some good armor pieces this time. Back at camp, I see 939 has a breeding option, so if I can get a male, I could make us as many as I would want to retry 323 later on. But to do that, I went on a narcotics spree first, since that last taming trip with the dogs and not having OP arrows still had me fuming. Arrows were restocked through the sandstorm and even made better narcotics this time. Purple ones, so this should be good. In the morning of day 37, a male was spotted and was a one-tap KO, but I fell asleep due to its howl, I think. Just on the ledge here, next to an eldritch overridden that would love to snack on my unconscious body, but I was safe, if you could call this safe. I woke up and took care of him first, fed the male, and tamed it up, but once I was home... Hold up. Wait a minute. All the ones I have are female. Either it changed from male to female when potting it, or I'm blind, or simply losing it. So I went back to where I spotted a male juvie, tamed it up, and double checked to confirm that yes, this in its soul trap is still a male. It just needs some time to grow up. So to keep myself busy, I placed a cooking pot to make kibble since the trippy Bronto that we saw will want some later on, but a bloater nuked my walls into a billion pieces, allowing the opportunity for zombies to get into camp. So I rushed to patch up that hole. I was safe for now, but this assured me that I would need to improve my defenses. This knight had a double XP moon showing up, which is very good to know to plan around that for leveling boosts. But for now, I was set on making large walls and turning camp into a base. So I got tons of cactus, made clay, but I would need more sand to make the tons of it that I would want. So nearby is this 145 doit that will help me with that job. <gasps> Once that nightmare was out of the picture, I landed the KO and fed it some mezzo berries and just went on back to gather some cactus since I don't want to waste my time sitting around it all day long. Another SWAT was taken out and it dropped a Mastercraft sniper which had me stoked. But I was burning up in the desert heat, can't travel too far from base, so I got some wood near the sleeping doed and made a ton of fence foundations. What did spark some joy in me is that this wild doed saved me from a mutant, yeeting it across the lands, handling that situation for me. He's like, oh, I will take care of it. Thank you very much. At night, the fence foundation placement began to gain more ground for the base, but a blood moon had even peaceful doeds aggro onto me, so that is another horrible effect going on. As for my doid, it was ready to get to work, so I saddled him up and some of the troops on the server named it Maximus Jr. Sand was now a non-issue, so we got clay for flippin' days. Also, a scientist dropped a whole medkit, which is an amazing find. Saves me some time. Large adobe walls were being placed onto the fence foundations, but the zombies were making this build very frustrating, and this pack leader SWAT was tanky. Not even the sniper could deal with it, so I made some propellant to make flame arrows, and these still were no match for it, just ate it like it was nothing. So I resorted to bringing out Fluffy to bury him. Fluffy smash. Two SWATs were killed, but no good items were found among their remains, so I got to lighting up the new perimeter with standing torches. Forty comprised of cactus cutting, keeping the walls going, and have an unhealthy dose of micro-raptor-induced humiliation by it tearing my pants off as I frantically tried to defend myself as it removed the remaining clothing pieces. And my embarrassment knows no bounds as I fell into a rabid DOZ pit with plenty more hiccups. Oh, sh- Oh sh! Oh sh! Oh sh! Diseased, I fumbled my way around, but Shredder here lived up to its name and shredded me. All right, get my stuff back. Try not to cry, but see a blood moon is rising. Proceed to cry. Fitting to tonight's moon, red eyes filled the darkness of the night, and a flippin' vulture chased me till the sun came up. The walls were coming together nicely, but zombies just don't stop getting in somehow and are making this task rather tedious. A stone gate with reinforced doors would hopefully resist any undead punches, and spikes were started to be placed outside. Day 42 was the day the walls were... Oh, well, semi-done. They're up and will hold for now, but I want to fortify some more later. With the new space gained, I set 939s to breed, and thankfully it worked smoothly. So in preparation for the babies, I set the soul terminal to auto-pick up any newborns. And to end off this joyful day, a feeding trough was plopped down to feed our new critters. 
With the base set for now, it was time to tame, starting with what I call the Horseman, landing the KO on one with my last good arrow that I had on me, and it was fed immediately. I did take the time this day to hover around till it was ready to go, since once any tames are finished, almost every hostile enemy aggroes onto it, so better safe than sorry on this one. The tame was successful at sunset, and I can ride it, which is pretty cool. That's another one set to hand into the foundation, but for now, I will safeguard it here at home like the others. 44 had me out and about looking for Rexes to tame since I want big eggs for kibble, but I was witness to a massive battle between two SCPs, but I quickly remembered that that one thing was what took out the heli, so I am out of here. This led me further south where I found the SCPs from the beginning, and it is known apparently as SCP-999, and it will be mine, yet it needs rare flowers to tame, so I tried to get some by hand here to no such luck sadly. I'd need to get some from our preserving bin, yet these two massive SCPs nearby had me curious so I just had to call up the professor. Could use some info here, I'm looking at two things and I can't decide which is uglier. First off, that thing looks like its torso ripped off as an unclean one. Surprised it's still here since in theory it can manifest to a different place. Just don't get too close, since from what I can gather, it might want to absorb you through its face. As for the second one, that's bananas. I know these creatures are crazy, but I wouldn't call them bananas. No, no, it, it is actual bananas. And containment protocol state it will only eat banana chunks from others of its kind, so yeah. Good luck with that. Well then, time to make the mother of all fruit salads. It did notice my shots, but had a hard time reaching me, so it began to spray what I assumed to be acid towards me, almost reaching me multiple times, and it was almost taken out when it found a way up. Woo, that was close. Give me that banana. Very well, that should help us tame one later on. Kind of cannibalistic, but okay. For 999, I made my trip home and got to appreciate the desert's beauty. It is a hellhole. What a pretty hellhole once you get the basic necessities sorted. I got the flowers in the morning and went back to the orange slime. Saw a level 125 and fed it and quickly gained its trust. And the most fitting name that I could think of for this friendly face was Squish. I will name you Squish. And I will pet the Squish. For Squish is a good Squish. I will pick up the Squish. I am protected by the Squish. By your sounds of joy, you contained SCP-999, the tickled monster who surprisingly is the son of the highest threat contained by the Foundation, the Scarlet King. But no worries, this little guy is just a delight to have around and works as an amazing medic. But I ain't gonna lie, moving around on Dorado was sluggish, to put it in the nicest terms. So when I saw this here eldritch diseased Maywing, I cared not for its level. I rushed it, dropped it as it was about to bite me, and claimed this amazing transport creature as my own. And due to its color scheme, I named it Spots. Flight home was slow since I had no saddle for Spots yet, but all the way, I saw some troops with a Maywing like mine accidentally angering a Titanosaur, but seems like this eldritch disease stuff is pretty potent based on this here health bar. Either way, home we go, run inside, whip up a Maywing saddle, and there, saddle up spots. And funnily enough, I had the banana monster's lungs in my invo. What the heck do I do with this? Dorado officially retired on day 46, as now spots and I would be scouting together, specifically for obsidian this time, which was found and collected in the Northwest Mountains in hopes to create a harpoon gun and net projectiles later on with it, but I felt a dreadful aura nearby, so carefully I peeked inside and saw an abomination, a bipedal spider named Aranea. My instinct was to go report this to Chase immediately since it is close to his base, so I got there as fast as I could and was greeted by the task force at the northern gate. What brings you back so soon, Professor? I have some very important information to report to Chase and I've got a really bad feeling about this. Please, lead me to him. I have some bad news, General. I've just come across an entity that gives me shivers down my spine. It's listed as Aranea. The name ring a bell? No, and that's a problem. That means there's three now. What do you mean three? My scouts have spotted two other abominations in the area that are not listed in the database which means they were not entities that escaped containment. The Acolyte must have brought them with him. 
For now, these three beings of considerable power are listed as high priority targets. We assume they are what you would call his generals. They seem uninterested in combat for now, but we need to stay on our toes. I'll handle them in due time. You know I can't stay here for long, General. Do you have any clue on what he could be after? The higher-ups are being hesitant on giving us information on the Scarlet King's containment protocols. Honestly, it shouldn't even be possible to contain them. But that's beside the point. Assuming that the Acolyte wants to free the Scarlet King, there's only one way for him to go about it. There are three keys, special artifacts you might call them, scattered, hidden in places throughout the desert. You might have noticed that there are three force fields stationed around the containment facility. Each key can be placed into its respective building, and when all three are placed, the containment measures that are keeping him in gets disabled. As of now, we're not sure where these keys are even located. But I will keep bothering the big fishes to give up the intel. And I think you know where I'm going with this. Yep, just another task that's above my pay grade. Dismissed. The enemy is growing in power by the day, and this threat can be ignored no longer. I need to beat three powerful bosses and retrieve three keys, and I suppose to do the latter, I'd need a strong SCP to accompany me into the caves. On the way home, I took out some tech dinos for easy electronics as I was lost in thought, since I couldn't figure out who would be the best candidate, and I need to make the right decision because we need to act fast. I could not ignore the fact that Spots looks like the night sky, and as if entranced by the beauty before me, I had a great idea. The cave candidate would be the so long desired 939. Its size, speed, and projectile toss would be perfect, so I rushed on over with a batch of meat puppies and just went at it during the day this time, and actually succeeded. I was hyped. It is perfect. It looks gorgeous. As for the Swats in the area, I got a new sniper and a catch pole to contain walkers it seems, and the second kill gained me a better AR. This caves will be fine! As for our new friend, I named it Wendy, and I thought a calico saddle would fit, however it does not, so no extra armor it seems, but that shouldn't be a problem, I hope. As for Wendy's abilities, the slashing deals bleed, which is very exciting, the toss ability works, and on top of that, to my utter surprise, it can jump. I didn't know it could do that. That is probably the best thing to get on a caving creature, to be honest. But these flippin' walkers, man, I just can't keep them out. They are like ticks. But in my frustration, my radio started acting up. Hey, smarty pants, I got something for you. Ever since the blood moon started, there have been some odd red bushes growing around the containment building. This concerns me. Get over here, grab a sample, and send it off to your lab rat, buddy. You heard the man. Flights now across the desert are done in no time flat, so I got there in a flash and picked these red bushes Chase was talking about. I'm uploading the composition of these seeds to you right now. Do something useful and tell me what they do, alright? General's orders. Sure thing. Have a little bit of faith in me, will ya? Uh, fine. I'll call you back as soon as I have a breakthrough. 48 and I was on that narcotic grind, until Wendy and I went off to get some explorer notes for faster leveling and tore anything and anyone apart for that sweet XP. The slashing spree was glorious to behold. Even got a normal explorer note, so doubling down on that, we skedaddled on back to base, took out a sickle more like the toothpick that he is, and here we go! Nuke the meat puppies in the terminal for massive level gains for yours truly. Y'all will not be missed. The next day I tried to saddle Wendy with the Megaloceros saddle, since that also seemed like it could possibly fit, however it does not. Worth a shot though. Gunpowder grind was going hard, and I made some necessary installments at our base, that being this generator with the power all hooked up and ready to go. But that used up almost all of my metal ingots and I would need a ton for ammo, so an Anki is on the menu, and this level 130 on the neighboring mountain will do perfectly. So with it KO'd and fed, I made a trip to Greenob to get some mutton, which I got, and went further south looking for an Argentavis. This high level was just what I was looking for, and just like that, KO'd and bada bing, it is mine to command. 
Since there was crystal here, I helped myself to it and made my way on back to my territory, but our Anki sadly isn't awake yet to get to grinding, but that's okay. I have more than enough to do. Hey, I think I got something. I think these plants can fire projectiles. Try planting them around your camp to defend yourself. <sighs> Man, you think we'd be able to afford better radios by now. Okay, well, time to make some crop plots and a ton of irrigation pipes. This better help since these zombies are a pest. The RG is perfect since it can hover, so I saddled it and named it Zapdos due to the current thunderstorm. The pipe build was done rather quickly and was satisfying to see that a thing that I wanted since the beginning is finally made on day 50. I can drink water at my house in safety. The Anki is ready, so we picked him up and proceeded to make crop towers at the gate. I need to hurry since a Juggy spawned in my base. I had to toss him off with Zapdos. I've had just about enough of you. Hold the line! Don't give them an inch! That does it! You forced my hand! <laughs> Time to bring out the big guns! Day 51, with the Anki ready to rip and named Pro Spectre, we went on a metal spree with Zapdos. And once we had our fill, set it all to smelt, and just went to go get some poly. It was a pretty grindy day. But 52 had me planting the seeds in the crops, and with the now smelted metal and poly, made the crucial harpoon gun and net projectile, key items to taming. Which is what I wanted to go do, but with a new sandstorm out, we wouldn't get very far with our stamina being drained, so I focused on making ammunition, as well as some firecrackers just in case, and once it all had blown over, got Polly a second time for more net projectiles, and followed those items up with grappling hooks, and got to repair my crossbow. All this would be essential to getting the three artifacts that Chase mentioned. With human waste placed into the crops, they finally began to show some signs of growth, looking hella freaky. But to keep growing some more, I'd best get fertilizer started, so I set the terminal to passively produce poop. So, about those rexes that I wanted to get big ol' legs for Gibble, well, that was on the to-do list today. And not only did I find a female that I KO'd, but also had a male right next to it that got the same snooze treatment. I did almost die off of spots due to, uh, zombie fire. Very scary. That right there made me just keep the high ground for the night until the morning of day 54, when both of them were ready to help me get kibble rolling. Once home, they got shoved into the terminal and it was set to generate unfertile eggs passively. I think with the breeding pair in there, it speeds up time, but I'm not fully sure. I didn't forget about the fertilizer though. I got a compost bin set up and filled up and saw one of my pretty plants shoot. Perfect! Thank you Crimson King and Professor Nat. As I was cleaning up rocks in the area so that this plant would have a better line of sight, I tried to call General Chase to report back on what these plants can do, but he didn't pick up, which is awfully unlike him. I figured I'd better go and check on the foundation so we wasted no time gliding on over. Crowley, over here! Planters! What happened? We faced a frontal assault from SCPs and it has resulted in heavy losses. Quickly, I'm sure you want to speak to the General. General, I'm... I'm sorry for the casualties suffered. I... I should have been here. No, you made the right call. Every time you leave here, the zombies stop coming. This horrendous act was done by the Scarlet Acolyte. We knew he had some sort of control over different entities. But to think he could command 610 so effortlessly. He's on a whole nother level, more than we could have anticipated. They appeared simultaneously out of nowhere. All of them rushed our gates and in the distance, I saw him for a brief moment before he vanished. So deeply sorry, General, but my plans did not work out the first time, so I had no choice but to go for a direct approach. The only choice I had was to use the single mech at our disposal to fend him off. After slaying a few, the remaining ones retreated into the dunes. But our trump card here has suffered substantial damages, and will be out of commission for the time being. At least, there's some good news. The bosses have finally given me the clearance to know where those damn keys are. And they're located here, here, and here. Yeah, 
Don't worry, I'll retrieve the keys and safeguard them. Probably best if I hold on to them too, since the Acolyte might think that if they're gone, that they would end up here with you. Good thinking. Do not let them get into his hands, or it'll be the end of us all. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some more soldiers to bury. This Scarlet Acolyte figure struck before we could even figure out what his goals are, but now we have some crucial information to get one step ahead. It's time to obtain one of the three keys. With one of them in our possession, that should halt his plans for the time being. Out here in the northwestern mountain range is where one of the caves General Chase mentioned is located at. So, Wendy, it is time to shine. And you too, Squish. Terrified, I enter the cave system, but didn't face too much opposition early on. Must be that Squish is keeping everyone here calm. Wendy's jump was perfect. I'd even got to a loot supply crate with a better desert cloth shirt. Very nice bonus. Going deeper, I made sure to steer us to the path of least resistance, as I felt an ominous presence lurking deep in the bowels of the cave. It seems like some of the Acolyte's minions are already here, and not just that, these are visibly powerful. An Eldritch big boy seemed to be leading the pack along with Eldritch imps and Eldritch ridden, all of which I think can one-shot me. So, it is sniping time. The high ground was perfect to take out the leader first, and continue to gun down the imps since their poison balls could cause me to be sent back to base in the blink of an eye. With them out of the picture, Wendy helped me to tear the ridden into ribbons, and these actually give a very lucrative amount of ammunition which is very, very welcome. Heading into the artifact room, I cleared out any remaining creatures, attached a laser sight to my AR, and a silencer to my sniper, and got the darn key. I like them apples, Mr. Acolyte. I'm getting out of here with your precious prize. Running out was smooth sailing as nothing wanted to upset Squish. So once out of this pit and graced by glorious rays of sunlight, it was time to head home on spots. Happy that this mission was a complete success. Weirdly enough, one of my turret plants was gone, so I had to set up a brand new one on an elevated foundation in hopes it would keep it safe. Now, SCPs are still roaming free and I was hired to catch them here in the first place, so let's go contain Banana Monster since my banana chunks are spoiling very quickly. And here we are! Easy dot. Okay! Nope! Okay, that does not work. Okay. Well, at least escaping that, I got to find some honey. Would be pretty yummy with some of them banana chunks, but I have to focus. This is crucial to kibble making that I still gotta do. And speaking of making kibble, I would need all veggie types to make the kibble, so a greenhouse would be needed. And to make that, I did a round of crystal gathering. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. We've seen multiple Dreamwalkers by now, and I still have no idea what they do, so I got close and saw its ability, and it is to spawn in a horde of undead to aid it. The worst thing possible, one could say. With more crystal gathered, I got the greenhouse started, and hey, this SWAT here dropped a Mastercraft combo, which is amazing. And on top of that, sniper ammo and rockets, just what we would need for that rocket launcher we got early on. Through the night, I stocked the plants up with feces since it seems like they only shoot with that in them. On day 57, I noticed my front plants had a hard time noticing the walkers down below, so I made some extensions and set up everything again with water and all that, but now they are working very nice. Greenhouse was the only focus for the remainder of the day, trying to get it done as fast as possible. Day 58 flew by. All I remember doing was adjusting some plant turrets, plant all four veggie types, so that is done, plus repaired my gear and painted it. That's probably what took so long in the day. After that, I spotted the plane nearby, so I circled it a bit to pressure it to drop some good loot. And once I opened the one that fell, I got granola bars for days. Guess I won't be needing any fiber supplements anytime soon. As for the night, just grind it on that ammunition, baby. 59 had me feeling adventurous, so I wandered on over where the unclean one likes to hang out and filled it with lead since it was too low of a level to make me want to tame it. Interestingly, when harvested, it gives minerals. Scouting around, I ended up in the dunes, and as I got to some ruins, I spotted some SCP-250. Some skeletons standing as if paralyzed. But here is where I came across what was described to me that attacked the foundation. SCP-610, a red serpent with wing-like appendages, and it is angry. But guess what? So am I. So I whipped out my weapons and tested everything in my arsenal on it, keeping my distance since it does have some flame ability. With some final bullets, it was slain and perished in agonizing pain, as it should. And harvesting it gives me meat that hates. 
And boy does harvesting it feel like it took up 80% of the day. After that, I wandered back to SCP-250, since night was about to fall and I wanted to see this mysterious creature in action. But of course, a sandstorm has to kick in right now. And this is worse than it seems. This place is extremely dangerous and I can't really glide with spots. Just sort of hop around as my stamina drains. And if that wasn't enough, I couldn't see sh Our only safety was to latch onto this mountainside through the howling winds gripping to it for our dear lives as we waited for the sun to rise. The sandstorm raged on in the morning of day 60, but here is where I learned how to make SCP repellent to maybe help me tame Banana Monster, and it also needs flesh that hates, so I think we should be set to make that. Once the storm had subsided, I went to check on SCP-250, and they moved around. Y'all think you're slick, but you ain't fooling me. I'll be back, you hear? This day brought about a new unclean one, which was tranked out and fed with some mutton. While it's taming, I took out another banana monster to restock on chunks since mine were pretty much all gone by now. And presto! Unclean one is ours. And I ain't gonna lie, this thing, like, really creeps me out. Like, a lot. On our flight back, I did want to try to contain SCP-3700 now that it was all alone. And I got to feed it once, but soon after that, everything here decided to intervene. Much to my dissatisfaction, and that of our glue crab friend, as it started thrashing about and even causing explosions. Safe to say it is furious now, so we will come back at a later date. Upon our arrival back home, I noticed I had some SCP-610 nodule in my inventory. Not sure what it does, but in the name of science, I ate it, and nothing happened. Not sure if that will have consequences later on, but I'll probably be okay. And yes, the SCP repellents were also crafted successfully in the night. 61 had me back on that narco grind, since these high tier narcotics are so expensive to make. And it was a day long grind, but SWATs are still lucrative. Got myself an Ascended AR and more rockets. This continued into 62, until I flew out to scout for high level tames. And the undead croc here is level 145, but has over 500,000 torpor. So I rushed home to do some more tranking math. Based on these narcotics that do 20k, I would need like in the ballpark of 26. That is a whole lot of narcotics to make to get that. So I put the berry gathering into overdrive, even swapped the veggies out for more narcos. But in my frantic state, I still managed to notice that the black metal trank arrows on a 100% damage combo deal up to 120k. So that lowers my grind need considerably. I need like seven or so, considering I might miss some shots. But I was craving a better way to make them, so I had a bright idea. I flew on over to SCP-2256, and I think it would be a good berry gatherer, and it needs exceptional kibble to tame. So I zipped on home and started making focal chili, one of the main ingredients for this kibble. I set the Rexes to make some more eggs, did a little meat run with Wendy in the meantime. The DOZs are also a really good source of spoiled meat for narcotics. And also did a loot crate wave mission. Got a ton of food in it, which would have been really cool if it could have been ascended weapons. But either way, circled back home to make the kibble and crafted black narcotics as expensive as they are. In the early hours of day 64, I thought to myself, yeah, let's do another wave of zombies for the contents of this crate. But things got out of hand so quickly, as with the waves, a extra horde showed up with the scream. Secondly, a bloater boomed me and I fell unconscious in the midst of the hordes. Thankfully, Wendy was fending them off. Shortly after, the crate broke, and I got forced off the side of the cliff, and it was raining zombies. They just do not stop coming. But this had its upsides too. Sure, the fighting was very tiresome, but there were plenty of swats in the mix. So, I got myself, thanks to their loot, an ascended long neck rifle and a normal shotgun. But the grind never stops. A little highlight as well was that I got cluster grenades and a chainsaw from a loot drop. With the last bit of kibble made, I went back to the trippy SCP. Well, that's odd. There's only one folder that seems to line up with this huge creature, but all data's been corroded, and apparently same goes for any physical documentation. I managed to feed it one piece of kibble, but then I got pounced by meat puppies again. And that almost knocked out spots, so I really need to be careful. I waited for the opportune moment to strike, swooped in and finished the feeds, potted it up, and off we go to safety. I immediately brought it out at base to test it out, and it is huge and highly intimidating. As for its berry gathering capabilities, eh, it's alright. I mainly managed to get some by leveling it up, which makes it lower its head, allowing me to get a ton of them for a short burst of time, 
So, uh, not very efficient, to be honest. So, you guessed it. Back to the same old grind if we plan on taming anything super powerful, since it is in our best interest to protect ourselves in case the Acolyte comes looking for the key. 66 had me do a pearl run for her chemistry bench, since I am tired of making narcotics in the pestle and mortar. Also, got polymer from some mantis, chitin alongside that for cementing paste, when I came across a platoon of SCP-610s in the form of female Dodo Reapers. I'll be back to slay you for what you've done. Back at home, I put together some more electronics, mixed some stuff for the paste, and got to crafting the chem bench. So now, production is going through the roof. Once a few more black arrows were made on day 67, I set out for another taming session. Sadly though, the immortal croc is now low level this time due to a dino life, so I will keep looking for something better. The search led me to stumble across a familiar yet new creature, an Alpha 939. All big and strong. This has to be a high level threat, so I started gutting it down and blowing it up, but decided to wait for daytime for its nocturnal buff to disappear. I know it's not the same universe, but man, this thing reminds me of Odegaran for some reason. I was running out of ammunition, it was incredibly annoying running around and pulling hostile undead aggro to me in the process, plus it roared, knocking me unconscious and landed me straight into the blade's reach of these horrifying beings, resulting in my death, leaving squish and spots behind. Through the thunderstorm, I rushed on Zapdos back to him, and thankfully they are safe. I got them back along with my stuff, but the Alpha 939 is gone, vanished from existence. I looked so long and couldn't spot it on spots. Defeated, I returned home to repair my gear and make more ammo since, well, I was all out. The ordeal made me realize that I need a strong tame. I can't reasonably progress more without one, so I did a mutton run and went on over to SCP-3700, the big old blue lobster. One feed worked, but took forever to want to eat again, so in the meantime, I flew on over to the dunes next to the Wyvern Scar to tame the big old tentacle whale that got us into this mess in the first place, SCP-682, but I thought the croc was 682. Hey, what's the deal here? One time it's a croc, the next it's a flying whale, what gives? So, the hard to kill reptile, the croc, as you say, basically it's a mortal. It's also hyper intelligent. As for the whale, I have no idea. Nothing is in the database, but I conclude it could be an evolved form of the croc considering they both seem to have the same hairstylist. Come here, big boy. Come here. Come on. Just a little bit closer. Come on. Not in the wyvern trench. Come on. Come here. Not in the wyvern trench. Come on. Take that! Very close call there, but happy it is not in the lava below. The feed was swift, and our she blows are incredibly powerful flying space whale with tentacles that summons creatures, spits explosive acid, and evolve from an immortal crocodile. Either way, back to the crab, it still won't eat my meat. The button, I mean. So, I checked on the croc again, and there was a level 135, but I'm going to need even more black trank arrows for it. The grind just never stops. So with that rolling on day 70, it was time to do another cave run. I almost forgot I need to hurry to get the keys. So in we go into this crevice, which has the cave entrance right here. Moving along, Wendy, Squish, and I were pretty relaxed until a platoon of eldritch undead were spotted, and their captain seemed to be this crimson-blooded shredder that deals more damage. So I used my sniping skills to take out the head honcho, followed by any imps, and finally clean up the rest with Wendy's slash attack. Squeezing through tight spaces, we got to the main chamber and spotted the key still in place. We snuck in carefully, but as soon as I picked it up, the nearby dinos aggroed onto me. So we zoomed on out of there, thankfully making it out safely. That is two out of three keys obtained. Since we were close to SCP-3700, I checked on it and it was finally ready to chow down. So the remainder of the tame was done super fast. And once I got back home, I immediately got to testing it. It has multiple claws, which you can use to do attacks and damage reduction, which is really cool, a bubble explosion, and a dancey dance to put enemies into a trance. It doesn't do anything, it just looks pretty cool. Bravo. Checking on our whale 682, it is massive, causes enormous explosions, and is just an intimidating force to have on our side. I can see why the Acolyte used this one. Day 71 was the day to get the final key for safekeeping. We flew out to the dunes and entered these here ruins, going down the staircase fighting through dinos and appreciate the cave art. Jumping and sneaking past some non-hostiles, I got to the main cave clearing. 
where with some perfect jumps from Wendy, we got across and had a look on ahead, noticing another pack of eldritch undead. The leader here is seemingly to be a crimson-blooded sycamore, who I tried to snipe first, but he was taking a beating and just not dropping. I filled him up with lead as fast as I could and just in the nick of time hopped onto Wendy to deliver the finishing blow. Once the remaining imps were sniped and overridden cut in half, we retrieved the final key and made our way out as fast as we could, making it through the tunnels safely. But as soon as I got to the surface and my radio got signal, I received a new call. What in tarnation did you do? I got the three keys, just like you asked. Ah, oh, those darn higher-ups need to give me clearance to all available information. I think what happened is removing the last key triggered an Alpha Manticore to spawn in the dunes. You started this, go finish it, and take it out! Crowley do this, Crowley do that. And cut me some slack. Well, that's a problem. I did what I was supposed to, but the problems just keep stacking up. I got home with the intent to level 6A2, but man, he is slow as f- we did get some levels in, though, at least. The newly appeared Manticore was our objective on day 72, bringing out our crab and whale. We began our attack, but it kept flying back and forth between here and the mountains all the time, and both my creatures are incredibly slow, so this will be fun. The back and forth was incredibly frustrating to deal with, so what I did was swap my mount. Now on the lopter, I eventually caught up to it and got it pinned between me and 628. I was pinching it, and our whale was whacking it. On cue, cinematically, a thunderstorm rolled in, fitting perfectly with our lightning effects. We barely got damage due to our armor buff, so with that out of the picture, and with a ton of engrams gained, we went on home, excited to make some tech machinery. Due to our recent tech engram unlocks, I rushed onto the whale spawns to tame another, and it went really well. Sadly, it did lose a little bit of effectiveness due to a scorched undead, but yeah, there's one ready to go. To make a replicator and other crucial machines, I need black pearls, so I went to farm deathworms on 3700, but came across a spider version of 610. This made me change my focus from black pearls to flesh that hates, making me go on a rampant spree through the dunes to find every single 610 and tear it apart. And it went very well. Dropped off all of the flesh at night, and got to the pearl grind on day 74, waiting for more 610s to spawn. Also, 3700 was now named Crab Rangoon. The death worms were almost impossible to find, so I fought a hive carrier, and apparently, it summons little mite minions. They dropped a good amount of riot armor, and what I came to realize is these dunes here are a bullet farm. The amount of scorched zombies here is insane, but on Crab Rangoon, this is the prime spot to suck up an ammunition. Later in the day, I did fight a breaker, and he is tough, but we honestly barely felt him, because we tanky as sh**. It also dropped riot gear. We ended any valuable targets into day 75, and got our sweet revenge on an Alpha 939, granting us a smidge of elements, so we'll take him out whenever we see him. Ending countless amounts of death worms along more flesh that hates, the Black Pearl Gathering was extremely slow, like mind-numbingly slow. It took up the whole day. 76 was spent gathering obsidian, plus a ton of pearls. Since this day, I made a pearl converter to craft my own black pearls. It is expensive, but a tad more feasible to get done. Besides from that, I got tons of metal for the remaining hours, since we need multiple thousands of metal ingots for a tech replicator, and it ain't gonna make itself. So 77 was entirely used for the exact same grind. Not much to add here, since nothing really noteworthy happened. But by day 78, I made a conga line of forges to smelt ore like 10 times faster, grinded more metal, and I thought I'd be smart by looting this oil pump and placing it, and then destroying it for ingots, but that was a massive flop. I thought I had a good idea there, but yeah, was still going pedal to the metal with narcotics and harvest more hateful meat pieces. That continued into 79, and man, these 610 reapers are tanky, so you guessed it, I want one of them. With enough resources now, back at home, I crafted my very own 610 Reaper female, and it will spawn in at a random level, but for once, a ray of luck graced me, granting me a max level pile of Angie meat. Oh, that's just, that just made this whole adventure worth it right there. I'm, I'm good. I'm set. So now, with this new companion, we continue to take down 610s in a cannibalistic way, since we need to make another for my grand plans. And this meat-driven massacre took up the entirety of day 80. I was dead set on making another one, since I plan on breeding these monstrosities. 
More of that grind on 81, however, I did get to craft a second one, coming out as level 190, which is okay since we already have a max level. The rest of my time was spent just restocking all of the forges, which was a long process into 82, along with, you guessed it, more narcotics, but I did get another call on the radio. Hello Crowley, just checking in. I hear you collected all the keys, will you be bringing them to our base soon? Hey Flatters, yeah I'm just a little bit held up at the moment, but don't worry, they're safe with me. I'll bring them in a few days, alright? Okay then, just don't take too long. Pretty soon an evac will be coming to bring you home. So it'll be good for you to hand in those keys, and the SCPs of course. Sooner rather than later. But yeah, Brandon is all I did. So that finally, on the blessed day 83, I placed the tech replicator to make more tech items, and my goal is the SS mutator, and for that, I'd need another poly run as I waited for more metal to smell. Once that was done, I flew on over to check the immortal croc, and it's only level 100, but I can't wait any longer, I need to do this now. I flung the arrows that costed me a fortune to make, and most of them just wouldn't connect the most agonizing shots of my life. And by the time I was out of arrows, he would have been KO'd if just one more would have hit. So I rushed on home and made the singular yellow narcotic I could make, which you might have guessed isn't enough. Deep breaths, everyone. Deep breaths. So I went back home, grinded for the 50 millionth time for Black Tranks, and there, finally, with that done, the arrow hit and it was out cold and with mutton in its invo, and after a long wait, it was tamed at night during a sandstorm so I could barely see it. That is one terrifying tame off the list. The pieces to my plan are in place, so here we go. On day 85, the mutator was crafted, and one of the six tens was changed with a gender swap pulse to male. So now, I can breed six tens for a tanky, meaty, beefy army. And up next is 6A2 in whale form, which got the same process applied. And with this here breeding pulse, it's time to make my own fleet of them all. This is most definitely against what I should be doing. I should contain, not make more of these things, but I'm sure Chase will not find out. 86 had me back on my duties, taming a max level SCP-999. I need more squishes. Plus got banana chunks again, since mine just keeps spoiling. And on the way home, a new SCP appeared. A nine-tailed fox registered as 953. I need me one of those, and I need 610 body parts to tame. Thankfully, I do have some titan hearts. So I hopped on home to make tranks and returned to send it to Sleepy Town. It just looks so cool. Its torpor drops very fast and more zombies than ever showed up, so feeding it narco berries was a hassle, especially since it ate very slowly. And with a zombie cry in the night, the horror grew way too quickly to handle. I tried to blast them all into the morning, but there was just no end to them. First at midday it was tamed, and I dubbed it Kurama. Look, if I wouldn't name it that, everyone would be disappointed in me. Testing it out, this would have been a really good cave tame as well, due to its jump, fleet slash, and stunning tail whip. But yeah, you know what I did for the rest of the day? Narcotics. 88 had me performing the great act of setting squishes to breed, lovely, best decision I've ever made, and went to look for more entities to contain, which led me to spot a big old bird named SCP-659, but at the moment they are incredibly busy, so anticipating some fights I came on over with Zapdos, and once they settled down, I got one knocked out and eliminated the other, but the sleeping one was glitched into the sky, so I parachute dropped onto it and fed it, however that led me to being stuck in its body. Uh, hey Nat, I'm in a bit of a pickle here. Ah, so you're stuck in SCP-659, eh? Well, at least you got it asleep. These critters have flock-like behaviors and increase intelligence and more of its kind in the flock, so I'm glad you're able to single one out. I'm sure you'll be free once it wakes up from its nap. Well then, with this thing tamed, I flew on over to base to get SCP repellents, and on the way I notice I can swap what I drop, which is pretty cool. We are a literal air bomber. With the SCP repellents in hand, I arrived at the Fruit Fiend. I applied the spray, and it is still very much so mad. I don't know what to do, it is a passive tame, and I'm out of options at this point, I, I don't know. Flying in the mountains, I found SCP-1000, looking like Bigfoot over here, but it died. There was a second one, but I have no idea what a Y909 substance is to tame it. Not a clue. Completely stumped. So I resorted to getting honey in the night. In order to make a veggie cake in the morning of day 90, with it I managed to tame Sparky here from the beginning of the adventure. 
So that's one more ready for the foundation. It can jump super high and can call down thunderbolts from the heavens, which is pretty neat. Scouring the lands for more SCPs, I found one of the three bosses that I still need to beat, the Eldritch Emperor, and he has an army plus a whopping 400k health pool. So before I'd lose him, I flew back home and began to prepare my army of 610s for an engagement. This brings us into day 91, where all day I got to name my army after my lovely patrons that support my adventures every single month. Thank you very much, and I am so excited to see these precious beasts perform in battle. And the time to fight is now! I made a platform saddle for Crab Rangoon and flew through thunder and rain to the Emperor's territory. I got some bunk beds set up on the platform and brought out a batch of 610s and marched into the war zone. A dino wipe did happen between days, so our target has had a little bit of a stat reroll, but let us not waste any time. Sick em. Tear him to pieces! Go, my pretties, go! You are no match for the angry meat. Perish! Perish! Perish under my might before Crab Rangoon! And the Reapers aren't even feeling it! Like, I knew they were tanky, but what the heck? I have outdone myself this day. Smash. Crab Rangoon, smash. He doesn't even know what to do! Come on, come on. Let him get up. Just kidding. Die. And it is done. The Eldritch Emperor is no more. And we got an uncracked Eldritch Spawn Egg. Plus the Eldritch Emperor Trophy. Very nice. I'm pretty sure the Foundation will appreciate this. All packed up and back home we go. And once there, I consumed this egg, and that dropped a hatchable version. So most of the morning of day 93, I watched the egg till it hatched and got immediately picked up by the soul terminal, where for now, it will raise up. I then brought out our amazing croc, and named it Florida's Finest, who got a 4x XP note, and got taken out on a leveling spree, and dang, this boy has a ton of bleed, which is pretty sick. I have big plans for you, and that would be to assist me in taking out the next creature that Chase was worried about. The Watcher, and it is ugly. I got some beds placed, just in case, and brought out the meaty beefy army. Hopped onto Florida's finest, and confidently began the slaughter. Let's get this party started. Everybody! Cause a commotion. There we go, now I got a couple on them. You know, it's so tough. Oh, he's actually tanking a lot. For only 12.5k health, he is pretty tanky. Walk in the park, baby. Whoa, there's a blind ability. Okay. Oh, the ability is called Horde. So he blinds me and summons in undead. I think they're just having a hard time hitting him. What about... What about... Now try to bite his head off. He's just not taking damage. All right. I'll take matters into my own hands. Hey. We did it! Yeah, I just needed to show him how it's done. That's that's all it was. Alright, well, that wasn't too bad at all. Oh, it was easy squeezy. Eldritch Overwatcher. Okay! Round two! There you go, now he's getting some shots off. Pretty sure this guy summons in Eldritch creatures. I need to watch out for the Eldritch Imps. They might one-shot me off of my croc. Oh, he's about to be half health. Okay. Oh, he, he can't even breathe. Look, I'll show you how it's done. I'll show you how it's done. And it is down. So you see, everybody? Man, you guys are flipping useless. All right, party people. Let's... Oh, god damn it, Crimson. Okay. Everybody, back to work. And I'm blind. And that's a lot of Crimson Ellos. Come on, peeps. Back me up. Back me up. All right. Why is everybody so mad? Shut up. Go this way. Oh, we'll take a bath or something. All right. All right. Uh... I think that does it. Let's wrap it up. Uh-oh. Mother of Worms. 160k health. That's not good. All right, everybody. This has to be the final version. Let's go. Come on. Oh, he's going into the cave. He's making a break for it. Let her rip. Hi, big guy. Okay, that's a whole lot of undead. And it's crimson-blooded sycamore spawns. Oh! My armor- <gasps> Holy! He hurts me off of my mount! Okay, I gotta go. Alright, you guys keep him occupied. 
All right, Squish, keep me healthy. All right, he's under half health. I don't want to get too close, though, because he almost one-shot me. Why are you guys even hitting him? Come on. I'm going to cause him some bleed. Oh, and that broke my other armor. You guys get off me. I do not have spare armor, so I don't want to risk this too much. But here we go. There we go. Oh, oh, I was almost dead. Almost dead. Come on, come on, come on. You guys got this. Down it goes, baby. That is another high priority threat. Take it out for the foundation. I did get a ton of watcher eyes from those kills, and they give me my own ridden, which explains how the acolyte keeps having them under his control. Plus, the mother of worms eyes give me higher tier versions. Can't wait to tell Chase that I figured this out. But before that, Irenea needs to be taken out before she strikes. So I prepared the squad in front of the tunnel, as ready as can be, but a little bit suspicious based off of that last fight. All right, my pretties. You know what to do. Clean up this cave like your life depends on it. Oh, I could web them too, okay. Well, it makes sense, it is a spider lady. All right, yeah, they did it. Feel like there's more to this one. Ex Aranea, looking like an Eldritch too, just like the Watcher. All right, peeps, move up. Beat its ass. This is a uh, hard terrain to fight in, my gosh. You are no match. For Florida's finest. Easy squeezy McCheesy baby. Crimson blooded. Shouldn't be a problem. Well, that was over quick. I thought she would be much tougher. I was worried for nothing. Twilight. I wonder what this one does. We can de be diplomatic about this. She is definitely much tankier than the rest, that's for sure. Okay. Uh I I I I guess we're done. This is the boss that never ends. Uh the hunter. What do you do? And she's out. Oh boy. This is gonna be rough. Okay. Uh I might need help with this one. Charge my pretties! What the f <laughs> What? Hey, oh, hey, oh, oh, it hurts me off my tape. Ah, squish. Oh, it's summoning so many different areas. I need, really need to watch my health because it really hurt me off my tape. But squish is. Squish is doing an outstanding medical job here. Everybody. Oh, 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 oh. That hurt. Help me, my pretties. Oh, my Croc's health is already close to half. Oh, it hurts. It hurts real bad, but I think we got it. And there it is. Oh, mama. Oh, it still has more underlings here. They brought the immortal Croc's health to down to under half. That was tough. That sure had some tense moments. I almost perished a few times and lost a ton of armor, but... Proudly, we walked on home, knowing that we prevented many casualties. Final stretch, last chance to wrangle some nasties. So with more mutton in the bag, I decided it's time to tame Mr. Cthulhu. And by the looks of things, I might have shown up at a bad time. With some medium potency arrows, I landed the knockout and shoved mutton down its throat. In the meantime, since giant serpents like to hang out at this spot, might as well grab one too. However, their reach is as far as ever. One misstep, and I'm a goner. Sadly, two arrows didn't connect, which hurts, since I'm basically out of time to make even more narcotics, but I did just barely manage with what I had, and succeeded at taming 722 right here. As well as 2622. Testing them out, the snake applies venom, roars a lot, and is super fast, but likes to get stuck on pebbles. And Cthulhu just decided to yeet itself off the cliff, but based on his moves, he's pretty cool likes to smash things, and I can respect that. Before I'd head on over to the foundation base, I potted out the Eldritch Scorpion, but it's small. Not as impactful as I thought it would be. But I was packed up and ready to leave this dastardly desert. I named one of my flying 682 whales, 
tiny, and together we did a final pass across the land, searching for any SCPs that I could snatch up, considering my time here is up. But nothing new showed itself. Still, uh, I mainly was just flying around to flex to our enemies that what got me into this mess in the first place is now under my control. But in the afternoon, it was time to pay a final visit to the troops, Private Flanders, and of course, General Chase. General Chase, Private Flanders, glad to see you're both doing well. It's almost time for me to leave, so I guess it's time for me to hand in those keys and SCPs on over to you. Perfect! With your evac, we'll also be getting some reinforcements, so I think we'll be fine. Thank you for all your hard work, Professor. Now, Private Flanders, put these keys back into their designated storages! Yes, sir. Thankfully, there haven't been any attacks since we scared off 610. Pretty sure that defeat made the acolyte tuck his tail and run. Thank you for your service, General, but I have no more use for you. General Chase! Flanders, it was you? Oh, Professor Crowley, so smart, but you were still just playing around in the palm of my hand, weren't you? He was so helpful retrieving those keys. Honestly, when Chase he divulged how to free the king and where to get the keys, I could barely contain myself. Sure, you beat me to them and took out some of my henchmen, but the outcome is the same. Now, I have important matters to attend to. So I've arranged for some of my friends to keep you occupied. You son of a- GET BACK HERE! What have you done? Good thing your friends never learned to crouch. Okay. I think the coast is clear. Oof, it is not clear. Okay, here's my chance. I need to make a break for it. Did he turn all the soldiers into zombies? I need to get out of here. Come on, come on. Please don't let me be too late. But just in case, I also have my little friends with me. You were too hasty, Flanders. You should have taken my creatures off of me when you had the chance. Stop, Flanders. You'll end everything! What an astute observation, Professor. That is precisely what will happen. You have to be kidding me! Please, go and attack! He's stunned thanks to Squish! Look, I can do it! Yes! Go, my pretties, go! Your sacrifices will save the world! Just keep it up! Oh, now that he isn't stunned anymore, he's barely taking damage. I need more squishes to do their thing, and we'll back him up with the Air Force. Oh, he's stunned. This is the time to strike my fishes. Go get him. We are just tearing him down, but I feel like he's just getting started. Some of my whales are half health. Okay, uh, some of my whales are at no health. Oh, Scarlet King is preparing a huge attack. Oh, oh, this is bad. Oh, that is painful. Oh, my babies. Oh, a blood moon is rising. You have to be kidding me. More squishes, more flesh that hates. I'm almost out though. Come my pretties, to battle, rush him. Oh, there goes my armor. Oh, he's breaking so much of my armor. Good thing I brought some spares. Oh, we're doing good damage now. We're doing good damage. All right, we got him under a million now. Now we're finally making a good push. Whoa. Where are you going, buddy boy? Oh, mama. Oh, he's taking big damage now. He's taking big damage. All right. He's under 500,000. It's 
batterij. Oh. My dinos ate him. Well. Ended and recycled. We just saved the world. Not what I signed up for, but happy things turned out. Will the Scarlet King return? I'm pretty sure he will. I doubt a being like that would just stay down. But for now, the remainder of Day 99 was spent cleaning up after Flanders' big ol' mess as I waited for my evac to get me out of here. It was on Day 100 when I passed through the Foundation's gates for the last time, taking in the devastation that Flanders left behind. Remembering General Chase and his great efforts here along with all of his soldiers. The question lingers though. Why was Flanders so hell-bent on ending the world? Not sure where he is, but I doubt we've seen the last of him. I just hope the next time that we meet, he can at least explain his actions. Hey, I'm coming home. Perfect. I'll send an invoice to Chase for both our hard work. Yeah, about that. I have a lot to tell you, but... I think it's time for me to retire. Oh hey there little buddy, glad to see you're still alive. And yes, we cannot forget that Rise of Kingdoms graciously supported this adventure, so let's indulge in its content on the PC version or on mobile, along with the massive community and find some people to team up with on the massive seamless world map. So join me, my lovelies, with the link below to download ROK, claim those 20 silver keys with the promo code, and enjoy yourselves in the multi-civilization event.